You're watching CBS 2 News. Here's the latest at 530. Well, tonight, 530, the COVID-19 vaccine is such a polarizing issue, but experts say it doesn't have to be. Welcome back to CBS 2 News at 5. So what is the most effective way to make sure the message gets through and people do get vaccinated? Will those hesitant to get the shot be more receptive when the plea comes from family members, friends, or their own doctor? Well, Dr. James Kyle, the medical director for Quality, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at LA Care Health Plan, joins us live with advice on how to speak with your loved ones about this sensitive subject. Welcome, doctor. First question, this issue, as you know, has divided families and severed friendships. So how do people talk about the vaccine without the conversation becoming a screaming match? Well, I think it's very important to, first of all, have respect for your other family members and to talk to them as intelligent individuals, providing them information and allowing them to make their own choice. I had the good fortune of having this very conversation just a few days ago with one of my family members and they now have agreed to have the vaccine because we laid out the facts, talked about it in a calm way, but a screaming match is only going to make people harder in their resistance. I believe that many of the resistant um, uh, individuals to taking the vaccine are misinformed. And if you could give them the right information in the right spirit, I think they'll respond. So, doctor, what is that information? Because I'm sure there are patients that show up to their doctors and they would like to get that information. How do doctors present that to the patient? I think it's important to present to patients the facts regarding the safety of the vaccine, how it was developed, um, the, the side effect profile, which is extremely low. And then look at the hard numbers of people who are now hospitalized, the pandemic that is happening among the unvaccinated, and give people a simple choice. Either you're vaccinated and you're safe, or you're unvaccinated and you run the risk of developing COVID. I think when people look at those numbers, as you've seen in some of the states now with the vaccine, vaccinated numbers rising, it's because people are recognizing that this is really serious and maybe some of what they've been hearing as misinformation isn't as true as they thought it was, and they're making the right decisions. Now, Dr. Carl, Dr. Ferrer of the L.A. County Department of Public Health says if you are vaccinated and you're around one or two unvaccinated people indoors, you should feel safe. If you have a loved one who is not vaccinated, how do you stay safe at family gatherings? Well, that's a very good question. Um, because I'm fully vaccinated and the vast majority of my family is fully vaccinated, we feel that we're safe for the most part. The, the breakthrough infection rate is fairly low. But we're encouraging our family members, those who are not vaccinated, to get vaccinated because we want to be even safer in our own homes and we want to still have contact with our loved ones. I think that's an important thing that you want all of your family to be safe and to enjoy one another. And the best way for that to happen is with vaccination. Dr. Kyle, you mentioned a pushback that people get when they're maybe pressured to do something that they maybe don't want to do. Or we're going to have to live with people, just be human nature of people who are not going to get vaccinated, correct? No matter what. I'm afraid what. so. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, there will be some people who will just not um, be persuadable. Um, and we have to love them. We have to care for them. Uh, we have to hopefully protect them if they wear masks. Um, but uh, they're not, some are not going to listen. I hope it's a very small number, um, a much smaller number than we now see uh, for all of us to be safe. Now, doctor, uh, another question. When you talk about uh, family members, in particular, some young people that say, well, I don't know enough about it. And even my doctor can't tell me enough about it, of how this is going to affect me down the road. So as long as I'm, I'm still safe, I'm wearing my masks, and I'm taking care of my immune system, I'm just going to wait, or I'm not going to get it at all. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that we do um, in medicine, that we take pills or other vaccines that we're not sure what the long-term effect will be, and no one can actually predict that for you. But let's take a look at the immediate effect. Right now, we know that COVID is, is, is just going to our communities like wildfire. So the immediate risk is so high that it's, it's much better to take care of that immediate problem now and worry about the long-term effects down the road. Um, you know, millions of people now have been vaccinated in this country. Um, there are no side effects that have been reported other than mild um, side effects at the time of the, of the uh, vaccination. I think it's, it's not wise to resist a, a current risk, um, how to take care of a current risk by worrying about some future potential risk that's not even proven or demonstrated. What is proven and demonstrated 
It's like COVID kills. And it kills people who are young. It kills people who are old. And now's the time to do something about it to protect yourself. Dr. Kyle, you have such a calming voice. I just <laughs> want to sure. say that first off. <laughs> Maybe if everybody could talk to you, right. or you could mitigate some of these family conversations. It was really great to talk to you. Great talking to you. Thank you so much for your time.